applause that welcome the Head of Aerospace Department, Professor A.M. Pradeep. All everybody please sit down on your seat. <coughs> this isn't just any event, it's a gathering of thousands of curious minds, all here to witness an icon in space exploration. Today we have the distinct honor of hosting the Chairman of Indian Space Research Organization, T.S. Somnar, an individual whose dedication and visionary leadership have propelled the India space missions to unprecedented heights. Now, I urge the Dean of Student Affairs, Professor Surinara Indula, to extend a heartfelt welcome as we present the bouquet to the esteemed chairperson of ISRO, T.S. Somnar. So as you are aware, Sri Somnath is currently Secretary Department of Space and Chairperson of ISRO and he took charge uh, almost two years back in Jan 2022. Prior to this, he has been the Director of uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and even prior to that he was the Director of Liquid Propulsion Space Center and during these as well as his prior uh, tenures, uh, Sri Somnath has been uh, instrumental in various uh, very important missions and uh, experimental uh, projects as well. Of course, all of you are aware of the Chandrayaan 3 and I would like to look at um, our long-term plan beyond Chandrayaan 3. And Chandrayaan 3 has been a great success now after the Chandrayaan 2 debacle of uh, not able to land uh, softly on the surface of the moon. I think we have made that that essential changes that are necessary in the overall program of landing on the surface that made ultimately the Chandrayaan 3 succeed. I think really gave a lot of confidence to us and a lot of confidence to the whole of the team to work on future programs. Uh, even, even the rover uh, has done fantastically well in the experiments. I think two of those experiments on board, such a cute rover, uh, especially doing the mineralogical experiments. I, I, I think you can imagine for such a small rover how we packed that much of stuff in, inside. You know that it has two important payloads called the, the X-ray uh, spectrography inside, put inside. It actually emits an uh, alpha particle into the material. It causes the X-ray fluorescence and you measure that and then do the spectroscopy. Similarly, we had another laser which is ablating the materials and then the ablation is actually captured by the spectroscope and then elemental composition analyzed. And it also has deployment mechanisms for all these payloads. Its transmission capability, imaging capability gave us that beautiful picture. Without those cameras on that uh, rover, we would have got the classical picture of the Chandrayaan 3 on the surface and none of us would have believed that ever. It ever landed on the moon. <laughs> and we had beautiful uh, obstacle avoidance capability and demonstrated it was almost going to fall into a, uh, on a crevice or some, uh, some ditch there, but it found out and then we were able to analyze the image and then take a detour. Almost 100 meters it traveled on the surface. But all of you know that today it's after the 14 days of its uh, contribution of collecting data, it is now sleeping very well there. So I advise our mighty not to wake it up again. <laughs> so it is sleeping forever for the history. Uh, but unfortunately that we were hoping that it will wake up uh, due, through its uh, ability, uh, but then it couldn't happen. Because whenever we tested the whole system in, 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 uh, in our laboratory going up to the temperature, it was working. But when you go up to the moon, the situations are quite different. There are different issues like the radiation, the extreme conditions that are encountered. There may not be fully simulatable in ground. That could be the reason why uh, some of the system would have gone bad, like the electronic boards or the soldering or the, or the materials that are used in that could have damaged uh, the whole circuits. So many things could have gone wrong and that's why this uh, not able to wake up again. Possibly, even if the Pratyan would have woken up, we will not know because unless the communication link between Pratyan and the Vikram is not established or in the Vikram some packages are non-functioning, still we will not know about it. Because it's not waking up alone is enough, we need to have a communication system which is healthy to know about it. So we hope that the, whatever data that we collected in 14 days, of Earth days, is going to give us fantastic uh, scientific outcome in the coming days and our scientists are working on it now. 
And Aditya L1 is almost there now. Aditya L1 is going to reach the Lagrangian point on 6th of January at 4 p.m. I think all of you are in uh, watch out for that announcement. So at 4 p.m. Uh, we will have a uh, very controlled burn of the engine of the Aditya L1 so that it enters into the uh, the orbit called the halo orbit. It's a very interesting orbit. Possibly you can read it in our website how it is going to be. Lagrangian point is a, a theoretical point, but reality Lagrangian point is not just that point where you can go and keep the satellite. It's a region where the gravity of between Earth and Sun will neutralize. But there is absolute neutralization is not possible because there are other bodies, like the moon is moving around. So moon will perturb that. And there are other objects like Mars, Venus, all of them are causing some disturbance to the gravity field. So net result of multi-body problem is that you get a region which is uh, gravity neutral. So the satellite will move around in a zone which is a three-dimensional space. And that point is called the Lagrangian point halo orbit. And we'll be inserting it so precisely in that. It's a complex calculation which enables us to inject the satellites at the precise location.